Istanbul is the heart of Turkey. It hosts 15 million people, nearly one-fifth of the country's population. It is the economic capital of Turkey, the cultural center, and the country's top tourist destination. This prominence is largely the result of its strategic position along the Bosphorus Strait, a major trade route that cuts right through the city, splitting Europe from Asia while linking the Mediterranean and Black Seas. Every year, around 48,000 vessels transit the strait, making it one of the busiest maritime passages in the world. Despite this, Turkey benefits very minimally from the strait. In 1936, Turkey and a list of other European countries signed the Montreux Convention, which gave Turkey control over the Bosphorus Strait. However, it also guaranteed a free passage for civilian vessels during times of peace and severely restricted the passage of military vessels not belonging to Black Sea states. As a result, nowadays, Turkey collects zero revenue from the strait and naval vessels from countries such as the US are largely prohibited from entering the Black Sea. Meanwhile, the Bosphorus Strait is getting congested. What if, instead of waiting hours to pass the Bosphorus Strait, ships could quickly pass through a new man-made canal across Istanbul, which would earn toll revenue and bypass the Montreux Convention? Well, this idea has existed for centuries. In the 1500s, an Istanbul canal was first proposed by Ottoman Sultan Suleiman I before being abandoned. Over the next three centuries, numerous other sultans attempted to resume the project, with no success. In the 1980s and 90s, numerous Turkish politicians reintroduced the proposal. However, with not nearly enough shipping traffic, the idea was dismissed. Then, in 2009, rumors surfaced that Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan was planning the largest project in Istanbul's history. In April 2009, pre-feasibility studies began, and finally, in 2011, Erdogan publicly announced his project, the Istanbul Canal. In 2012, feasibility studies began. Over the next few years, the project was researched, the canal route was chosen, and the project received environmental approval. Then, in March 2021, the Turkish government approved the canal development plans, finally enabling construction to begin. The Istanbul Canal is planned to be 45 kilometers long, sitting 30 kilometers west of the Bosphorus Strait. In comparison, the Panama Canal is 82 kilometers long. It would start at the Sea of Marmara before crossing the Kachukchekmeche Lagoon, connecting to the Sazlidir Baraja Reservoir, and traversing 17 kilometers north to the Black Sea. The canal would be 360 meters wide at the surface and 275 meters wide at the bottom, with a depth of 21 meters, about the same as the Suez Canal. This is deep enough for most cargo ships, except the largest supertankers and supercontainers. Eventually, Turkey hopes the canal would accommodate 130 to 160 ships a day, around the current daily traffic of the Bosphorus. The Istanbul Canal would be the centerpiece of an even larger development project. Surrounding the canal would be residential and commercial developments, which would host approximately 500,000 people. These would be linked by three underground tunnels, along with six bridges across the canal. These bridges would have vertical clearances high enough for the largest ships and would cost another $1.4 billion. In addition, there would be a new container port, numerous marinas, and reclaimed land along the Sea of Marmara. Lastly, the canal would integrate with Istanbul's new $12 billion international airport and its new Otoyol 7 motorway to form a major international logistics hub northwest of the city. Further out, the project is part of a nationwide infrastructure boom meant to propel Turkey's economy as part of its Vision 2023 program. According to the Turkish government, the Istanbul Canal would cost around 15 billion US dollars and take seven years to construct. If completed, it would provide some major benefits for Turkey. First of all, it would relieve congestion in the Bosphorus Strait. Currently, ships have to wait an average of 14 hours to enter the Black Sea, resulting in massive queues off the coast. The canal would clear up this congestion, improving international trade, decreasing the risk of shipping accidents, and lowering pollution in Istanbul. In addition, the canal would divert dangerous cargo away from Istanbul's city center, as shown by the 2020 Beirut explosion, having dangerous cargo near cities is a recipe for disaster. Moreover, the canal construction would create an estimated 8 to 10,000 jobs, 
boosting the country's construction industry. Most importantly though, the canal would allow Turkey to bypass the Montreux Convention. If it wanted, Turkey would be able to let foreign naval vessels into the Black Sea. And it would be allowed to charge tolls. Eventually, the Turkish government believes the canal could generate around $8 billion in annual revenue. Despite all this, the Istanbul Canal is very controversial. Its construction would displace thousands of people while affecting the livelihoods of up to 1 million. In addition, it would result in environmental damage and potential damage to archaeological sites. Moreover, the canal would disrupt the city's already strained water supply. It would completely uproot the Sazla de Baraja reservoir and would likely contaminate underground water tables and streams. Furthermore, by establishing a second link between the Mediterranean and Black Seas, it could disrupt the flow between them. Oceanographers warned that the canal could result in a massive inflow of organisms into the Sea of Marmara, leading to the death of marine life and a terrible smell around Istanbul. Because of all this, the project has largely been opposed by the citizens of Istanbul. According to a 2020 poll, 80% of Istanbul citizens oppose the project. Even more, since the canal would enable large US and NATO warships to enter the Black Sea, it has drawn opposition from Russia, who claims it violates the Montreux Convention and would undermine its national security. If the canal is built, it could strain Turkish-Russian relations while disrupting stability in the Black Sea. Because of this, in April 2021, 104 former Turkish naval officials signed an open letter against the canal. The day after, 10 were arrested. Lastly, many doubt the project would work. While the canal would bypass the Montreux Convention, it would not revoke it. Ships would still be guaranteed free passage through the Bosphorus Strait, and therefore most would still use it. Turkey hopes that the appeal of a traffic-free fast lane would be enough to get some ships to move over and pay. However, it's feared that ships would not do this, and would simply wait to use the Bosphorus instead. Nevertheless, President Erdogan is committed to the project. Tenders are to be held soon, and construction on the canal's first bridge is planned to begin in June 2021. If the project is finally realized, it will transform the landscape of Istanbul. It would relieve congestion from the Bosphorus Strait and earn revenue, but would also displace thousands of people and potentially damage Istanbul's water supply while disrupting the region's stability. What do you think? Is the Istanbul Canal a good idea? Let's talk about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe for more videos very similar to this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.